following my um, blog articles on fitting the OptiBay to the um, MacBook Pro, I had a couple of people ask um, if I could show how I'd done my drive setup and how I was dealing with that, uh, things like partitioning, that sort of stuff. Um, so I thought I'd show you, more than happy to. Um, I've got two drives in my machine um, as per that blog, so I'll just show you how that's set up. If we look under Serial ATA, just here, you'll see I've got my um, SATA 6, sorry, SATA 3 um, SSD. It's running at the proper speed. If we look there, you'll see that it's it's negotiated at 6 gigabits. Now that's in the, the proper hard drive bay. If you pop that in the OptiBay, it'll only negotiate at 3 gig. Because um, if you look at that one there, that's the OptiBay, um, it's only a link speed of 3 gig. So um, it kind of limits what, what device you can put where. Okay, so you can see I've got the two drives. That's a 750 gig drive, that's in the OptiBay, and that's the 256 gig that's in the uh, the normal hard drive space. Okay, so what we'll do, let's have a quick look at the partitioning. I'll just fire up the disk utility. All right, as you can see, there's my SSD, the primary device. I've got two partitions on there. Um, the first one is your normal OS X or OS X uh, partition which is on mine, it's about 220 gig, I think. Yeah, it says down the bottom there. Um, so that that's my primary partition. I've also put a boot camp partition on there as well, um, which is not very big. It's about 35 gig. Um, you don't have to do that. If you want, you can put the boot camp will actually allow you to install onto the, um, the second drive as well. In fact, up to recently, I had a boot camp on the SSD as well as a boot camp on the the physical drive as well so you do get a lot of choice now what I've then done is I've created a second volume which has all my data on okay so that that's my 750 gig drive now if you look in finder you see we'll have there's our data file which has got all my stuff on and there's my OS X or OS 10 and you should be able to see my boot camp in there as well Got a couple of queries about how it's treated on Time Machine. Well, it does work fine with Time Machine. Um, thing to remember, I mean, Time Machine will work with things like Mac Pros, and you know they're designed to have multiple drives. So if we have a quick look at our Time Machine backups, there's my Mac Pro. Uh, we'll go into the latest backup. You'll see that it's got both volumes in there. Okay, so so there's absolutely no problem with backing up both of them. Now obviously my time machine is an external drive, you, you wouldn't want to time machine onto the same box, that, that would be slightly crazy. Right, okay, um, the other thing I've been looking at, if you look um, by default, your home area, your user area is going to default to the OS X SSD, okay, so there's mine. Now I've actually redirected a number of my folders because you want to really keep the rights down on the um, the SSD as low as you can because at the moment there's no trim support for non-Apple SSDs. So what I've done is I've used symbolic links to actually redirect a number of folders. So if we have a look in my um, my home directory, which is Mac there on the left, you can see the ones I've redirected by the uh, little arrow in the corner. So I've redirected my documents, my downloads, uh, movies, music and pictures. Okay. Um, ones that I haven't are the ones that I want to rely on for speed, like for example my any local applications um, are stored locally Okay, on the SSD, it makes them faster. My desktop um, I haven't moved, uh, Dropbox I haven't moved, I probably will move that, I've only just noticed it. Um, and then there's my data which is basically um, some encrypted images that I use for some critical data. Um, the other ones have been moved, pictures, music, movies, I'm not that bothered about raw performance for those. So I, I keep those on the physical drive, I keep them separate. Um, the other ones, things like your uh, library, okay, library has a lot of application support stuff in there. Now I, I really want performance, so I've kept the library on my SSD. Now one of the options um, that people mentioned was the idea of redirecting your whole user account. So if we like look at the user accounts, Okay, so there's my admin account. I'm just going to unlock. 
to use this. Okay, if you click on the advanced options, you do get the option to be able to move your whole home directory to a different volume. The problem with doing that, I think, is it moves everything because, you know, let, let's have another look under my home directory again. So what you'll see is it moves everything under there. So basically it'll move everything, which is fine, but it'll also move things like your library um, and things like that. So everything will be moved to the slower drive. Now, from my point of view, I prefer, you know, sort of raw performance. I suppose you can actually use symbolic links to link back to the SSD for, say, the library. Um, but, you know, I, I prefer to do it that way around. Um, OK, well, that that's pretty much how I've set my solution up. It works incredibly well. Um, the performance is incredibly fluid. I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm currently running um, Windows as well, sort of virtualized. So, you know, if I, you can see, as far as Word, that's in parallels. Um, there we go. We can fire it up natively as well. So that's the... Um, that's the Office 2011 version, that's Office t Excel 2011. Um, let me have a look, we'll fire up Excel on Windows as well. There we go, I think you can see it's incredibly fluid and it works incredibly well. Very impressed with the machine. Um, there's our activity monitor. You can see I've got 8 gig in this machine, um, currently a fair bit free as well. Um, CPU, well, I guess even with it recording and running all that stuff at the moment, it's still just ticking over. Anyway, um, that's quite a quick run through of how I've set my drives up. Um, you know, I mean, the only other thing maybe you want to look at, I mean, for example, there you'll see that I've got my iDisk from Mobile Me on my desktop, so I, I synchronize it locally. Um, I did struggle trying to work out how to redirect that to my physical drive, but I eventually found it. If you look under. Let me have a look. Where is it? I think it's under library. There you go. File sync. Yeah, under library, you'll see that directory file sync. Okay, now I've redirected that to using a symbolic link to my um, physical SATA drive because I want that, you know, sort of 40 gig image to be on a, a on cheap second tier storage, not my expensive SSD. So we pop into that folder. Oops. You'll now see that's got my mobile me sparse bundles in it. Okay, um, it's you know it's a better way of doing it I think because you're you're not that concerned with performance of your iDisk typically. Anyway, um, I hope you find that useful. That was kind of what I think I've been asked for. Um, if you want any more info about how I've done this, how I've set it up, then uh, just drop me an email and I'll see what I can do for you. Thanks.